yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech, and today I want to show you the Mini X Neo X5 Android Mini PC. This guy's got a dual core 1.6 GHz A9 processor, quad core Mali 400 graphics, 1 GB of DDR3 DRAM, 16 GBs of flash memory, full size SD card slot, Wi Fi 802.11 BGNN, it also has wired Ethernet, HDMI 1.4A, Android 4.11, 3 USB ports, digital optical audio out, headphones audio out, it's got software with some nice feature plus lots more. The first thing you'll notice about the Neo X5 is it's closer in shape to an Apple TV or a Western Digital TV than to other Android mini PCs. It's more like a small set top box but it's got a lot more ports than most set top boxes. Now let's take a look at the ports on the Neo X5. From left to right we've got the recovery button which is used to update the firmware on the Neo X5. We've got the HDMI port, digital optical audio out, two full size USB ports with enough power to run an external hard drive, we've got Ethernet, and we've got your DC power in. On the side we've got even more options. We've got a power button, headphone jack, microphone jack, another USB port, full size SD card slot, and an OTG port which is used for updating the X5 and also for accessing the memory while it's running Android. Also included with the Neo X5 is this IR remote control. It gives you the basics that you need to navigate Android like home, menu, back, up, down, left, right, select. It also gives you media player buttons like play, stop, fast forward. The way this remote is used is the Neo X5 comes with two different launchers. One is made specifically for remotes like this where you only can go up, down, left, right and so you can toggle through the different categories say you want to choose apps then you just toggle down through all the apps until you find the one you want and hit select in the middle to go there the only problem with this is sometimes it's hard to navigate once you get inside of your app but if you're only planning on doing media playing like working with XBMC this remote should work just fine I personally like to use an air mouse remote that uh, it's kinda like a mouse you can get around by just aiming the mouse where you want and it's just got left and right click buttons you can do everything you need with the mouse there's also other remotes that have touch pads and uh, keyboards on them that you could use as well if you're gonna be doing a lot of typing and that sort of thing if you look through the videos on my channel you can see several different remotes that work with Android mini PCs the power button on the remote is fully working. It will turn on and off the X5, and when it turns it off, it puts it into basically a deep sleep mode, sort of like Apple TVs does. Uh, I checked on my watt meter, and it actually uses zero watts when it's in that mode. The button on the side does the same thing as the power button on the remote, and you can also use the button on the taskbar to fully shut it down if you wanted to disconnect it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the software that comes on the Neo X5. So when you first boot it up, this is what you're going to see. It's actually a really nice ROM with a lot of little extras on it, and it works really well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the settings now. So you've got your Wi-Fi here, which works great, by the way. You've got your Bluetooth working. Ethernet works well. I've noticed sometimes when you first start up, you have to toggle it on and off to get it to connect. Here under sound you'll find the sound device manager and that's where you can choose if the audio comes out of your HDMI cable or your optical audio cable or both. You can also choose which microphone input you use here in the sound device manager. Under your display settings you've got settings like force show menu button on status bar and auto hide status bar which I know a lot of people have requested. There's also a sleep timer available on this ROM, which wasn't always available on Android mini PCs. Uh, sometimes you'd come down and your monitor or TV had been on for 12 hours, so this will eliminate that. Here you can see it does have 1080p output. It's actually a 720p ROM, but we'll put a full 1080p ROM on it in a few minutes. On your screen scale, you'll need to slide that slider up to the, all the way to the end once, and then it's, it remembers it and stays that way. On. Here's your storage, so you've got, almost, you've got 4 gigs for app storage, which is great. That's a good amount of space there over 10 gigs for other stuff like music, movies, mp3s, and then there's always the uh, option to put in a micro SD card or full size SD card to get up to another 32 gigs of storage space. And finally here's your device information, so you've got Android 4.11, your kernel version and build number. I went ahead and installed the Neo X5 Finless 1.0 ROM. It's a fully rooted ROM that's had all the extra apps cleaned up out of it. There's two versions of it. I went with the 1080p version. If your main concern is speed, you might want to go with the 720p version. Next, I went ahead and installed all my favorite apps on here. I've got Go Launcher HD, X Launcher Pro for these little panes of apps, Appy Geek for Newsfeed, Beautiful Widgets, and the live wallpaper is Celtic Garden by Dual Boot Games. See on Go Launcher, you can see the live wallpaper on your app drawer. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the CPU information real quick here. So you can see it's a dual core A9 processor. It goes all the way up to 1.6 gigahertz, which is the, the full speed that's advertised. Some of them are clocked a little below. It's got a ARM9 architecture, it's a neon device, and here's your cache information down here. Now I'll run a couple benchmarks on the X5. So I always like to run Linpack on all my Android mini PCs just because it's fast and I can get an idea of how they're performing. So they usually average around 60 to 65. This guy's running right around 50. So it's probably the, 10, the true 1080p ROM is slowing it down a bit and also all the live wallpapers and widgets that I have on there. But hopefully they'll, uh, they'll tweak the performance in the future on uh, future ROMs. I know it's possible to tweak these because the MK808, which is one of the oldest ones, just got the finless 1.7 ROM and it's super fast. Next I ran AND22 and that's a benchmark that kind of tests every component of the system and I just, I'm going to go skip right to the end because it takes about 5 minutes. Uh, the score came in pretty respectable, about 8,000 on here so that's a little above average I'd say. A lot of them come in around 7,000. Just for a comparison my Galaxy S3 gets about 10,000. Updating the Neo X5's firmware is a lot like updating on other Android mini PCs. Disconnect the power, put a paper clip in the recovery hole and hold down the button. Plug the USB cable into the OTG port and let go of the power button after about 3 seconds. You'll hear a ding and the update software will indicate you're connected if you do it right. One thing to note is the OTG port on the Neo X5 is a deeper port than most other Android mini PCs. So you'll need to use the included cable. The one on the left here is the extended cable and that's what you'll need. The one on the right is too short and won't reach the contacts. There are one or two things that you need to watch out for with the Neo X5. First of all, uh, when you plug in the power, it doesn't turn on until you hold the power button for about two seconds. That threw me for a loop when I first got it. Second, I had a problem with the optical audio cable staying in the hole. It might be that my cable is too big, or it might be that this unit was set in too deep, but just something to watch out for, no big deal at all. Overall, I'm very happy with the Neo X5. It's one of my favorite Android media players so far. Its build of Android Jelly Bean works very, very well. Also, the HD video playback works great with the stock media player or MX player. XBMC also works if you use the MX player version from xbmcandroid.com. Finally, the three powered USB ports mean that this is the first Android media player that I've used that doesn't need a USB hub for powering your hard drives. I'll put a link to the Neo X5, the remote, the software, the firmware update, everything you saw in the video, I'll put it down in the video description down below. Just one question, do you want to see my latest reviews as soon as they're released? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and YouTube will make sure you are one of the first ones to see each new video. Or for sneak previews, like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash somecooltech. Alright guys, let me know what you think about the Neo X5 in the comments down below. And hit that little like button down below the video, it helps me out a ton. And as always, thanks for watching and aloha.